In this video, we set up VS Code to work with Git repos in Azure DevOps. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Raltos. Azure DevOps has a built-in web-based IDE or integrated development environment, but I've gotten comfortable with many of the features of VS Code and want to use VS Code to create and modify template files, PowerShell, and other source code files. In this video, we're going to walk through setting up Git on a local computer to work with VS Code, then clone a repo and push changes back to Azure DevOps. Before that, please take a second to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. If you'd like to learn more about Windows Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop on udemy.com. When you create a repo in Azure DevOps, there are two options for version control, Git and Teams Foundation version control. We're going to work with Git for this example. Git works by cloning a copy of the files to your local machine. You work on them locally and then push the changes back. Git is an advanced version control system, and that description only scratches the surface of what it can do. I have a blog post that's intended to get lone scripters and teams of one up and running with Git and GitHub. A lot of the information in that blog post will cover in this video. I'll include links to that below if you're interested in learning more. In order to use Git repositories, we have to install Git and configure a couple settings. We'll walk through setting that up next. Okay, more demo, less talking. You'll need an account with Azure DevOps and VS Code installed on the local computer to follow along. Links to all of these sites will be below. Let's get started by downloading Git. Here we are on the workstation. This demo assumes you have VS Code installed. If not, download and install it quick. Once ready, we're going to download and install Git. Let's search for Git download. Here's the Git download link. We'll select the client for Windows or whatever platform you use. I don't have a Mac OS. I assume it will be the same process though if you are using a Mac or Linux. There's also a GUI client. That's not the version we want. Well, maybe you do, but I don't. All we need is the command line part. The rest is done by VS Code. Download and run the setup for your OS. Sixty-four bit for this example, and we'll run the installer. We're going to select the default for everything. There's one thing I will point out: the default editor is Vim. You won't encounter Vim while using VS Code, but if you do more with Git, you may end up in a Vim editor at some point. I point this out because it can be a bit tricky to exit Vim if you're not familiar with it. You can change this to another text editor if you'd like. Notepad++ or VS Code are both good options. I'll leave it as default and go to Next. And we'll next our way through the rest of the installer. There we go, and we'll wait until it's finished. Click Finished when done. You can read the release notes if you like to. I don't need to. We'll go to Finish. We only need to configure two items in Git to get started. Let's bash that out. Go to Git Bash. Here we are in Bash. Next, we have to let Git know who we are. This information is used to track who is making changes to code. Very useful for a version control system. We're going to enter two configuration commands. One of them sets the username, and one of them sets the email address. Be sure to enter two dashes in front of global, and we'll enter in our username. Next is the email address. Again, two dashes in front of global.
And that's it. And again, make sure to enter that double dash in front of global. That is the tough part. You can close bash now. Now we can go to DevOps. You can use an existing repo for this next step as long as it's set as a Git repo. Let's go to the one I did on a video last week about setting up a simple server. If we go to repos, you can tell it's using a git repo because of the commits, pushes, and branches options under repo. The Teams Foundation version control repo would not have these options. Let's clone this repo to our local workstation. Go to clone. You have two options to clone a repository. One, you could copy this link and use that in VS Code to clone the repository. The other option is click the Clone to VS Code button. And notice there are other options here if you have another IDE you want to use. Let's click Clone to VS Code. And we'll click Yes to switch the apps. And again, we'll click Open. It will ask for a location for the repository. I like to create a folder under my documents for Git repos. You can store them any place local, except for locations that are replicated, like a OneDrive folder. We use Git to keep files in a central location. We don't need file synchronization on top of that. So we'll select this location, and Git will create a subfolder for the repo. When prompted, sign in with the same account you use to sign in to Azure DevOps. And then next, we'll click Open to open the repository. That worked. Now we have the same files that are in DevOps copied to the local computer. Git doesn't sync files. We clone a repo locally, make changes, and then push the changes to the remote repository. We can also pull changes from the remote repo to refresh the local copy. Let's go to the readme file. We're going to add a new line. And now save the file. Notice the version control symbol shows that there's been a change. Let's go back to DevOps. We'll close that. And if we open the readme file, the change has not been pushed to the repo yet, so we don't see the update. Let's go back to VS Code. From here, we'll go into version control. The first thing we're going to do is click the plus sign next to the readme file. This stages the changes. If there were multiple files changed, we could stage some or all of the files. Next, we're going to commit. Enter a message for the commit. You need to add a message, and it should be something descriptive, so others reviewing changes know what was done. Commit next by clicking the check mark. That commits the change to the local repository on your hard drive. We still need to push those changes to the repo. We do that by going to the three dots and push. Now let's go back to DevOps. If we refresh, we should see a new line. There's the new line. Let's go to history. Here it shows the commit. We have the message and also who did it and the time it was done. Next, let's remove the new line in the readme file. We go to edit and then delete that line. Once it's been deleted, click commit. 
this is a commit just like what we did in VS Code, only we're doing it on the remote repository instead of our local copy. Click Commit. The change has been made and the new line is gone. Next, let's go back to VS Code. Back at the README file, it still shows our change because it was updated remotely, but we haven't pulled down the change yet. So let's go back to version control. And this time we're gonna run a get pull. And that updates our local copy. This is great for one person, but if you had a team of people working on the same source code, you'd need to be more cautious about commits, pushes, and pulls. That's why Git has the option to create branches that can be modified separate from the master branch and then merge back in. But that's a topic for a different day. For this video, that's how we use Git with VS Code and Azure DevOps. I hope this helps you get started with Git repositories and VS Code. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.